Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, uh, the uh, Minister of Tourism and Antiquities, Dr. Khaled Al Anani, have said that heavy pieces that are scheduled to be um, uh, transferred uh, to the Grand Egyptian Museum are uh, uh, a number of uh, six uh, statues of King uh, uh, Senosert the first, and also a presentation table of King Minhotub the second for from. Uh, the uh, Egyptian uh, uh, Tahrir uh, Museum uh, during the next uh, few days it is going to be uh, transferred to the Grand Egyptian uh, Museum. To shed more light on this we have the pleasure to have this phone with Dr. Ehab Kamil uh, the tourism expert. Good morning Dr. Kamil. Good morning. Dr. Kamil could you give us uh, um, an idea about the, the six pieces heavy pieces uh, and statues that is going to be transferred from uh, the um, uh, Tahrir uh, Museum to the Grand Egyptian Museum? Well, um, the pieces they are mainly the statues of King Sanusir I and they are among the very precious pieces that we have in the Egyptian Museum because they belong to the Middle Kingdom. Actually, those statues um, or any artifact that dates back to the Middle Kingdom is considered to be very precious, especially that we haven't got many pieces in the Egyptian Museum that belongs to the Middle Kingdom. I don't know really why they don't shed light on the Middle Kingdom in all the programs or in the documentaries, despite that it's a very important and a crucial period in the Egyptian history. Actually, those um, statues, they are considered to be um, extremely big statues, which um, w the Egyptian Museum uh, was lucky to, uh, to possess um, because lots of pieces from the Middle Kingdom are spread all over the world. However, um, you can say that now the clock is ticking for the opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum. Now it's getting to be very serious and it's becoming now only a matter of time. The clock is ticking for the big inauguration of the museum. Actually, the offering table also of King Amenhotep III, that's also one of the very important pieces. Although we have many offering tables in the Egyptian um, museum, but that of King Amenhotep uh, is considered to be one of the rare offering tables that belongs to one of the pharaohs, um, which also in the possession of the Egyptian museum. I think... Um, this is something that should be given a great deal of care and attention. And also, I believe that um, we should be shedding more light or starting the countdown on the inauguration of the new Egyptian museum. The people are so eager to see what's it like, what the display is going to be like, how the pieces will be arranged. And I think it will be a pride for the Egyptian museology. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Kamil, uh, um, uh, now they, these are six uh, pieces, uh, uh, big pieces that are going to be transferred to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Uh, could you tell us about the preparations uh, um, in uh, transferring these uh, uh, or holding uh, these uh, uh, pieces to be transferred to the Grand Egyptian Museum? Of course, it's, um, it's a very delicate process, which is going to be um, covered by the media, as well as it, there's lots of very complicated technical uh, procedures that's going to take place. As you know, the pieces are big. Um, also, uh, the pieces are considered to be among the most precious belongings of the Egyptian Museum, uh, the whole world will be, as I said, will be looking for the countdown of the Egyptian, uh, for the inauguration of the Egyptian Museum, which I believe that will make these, or the transfer of these pieces um, at such timing 
it will be attracting the attention of the whole world. Everybody will be asking the big question when the museum is going to be inaugurated and how it's going to be inaugurated and how um, the inauguration ceremony will take place after we have impressed the world uh, transferring the royal mummies to the Museum of Civilization. So the whole world is focused on Egypt at the moment because we had impressed the world once, so the whole world is asking what the Egyptians are going to be doing next, how they're going to impress the world again. Yes, uh, Dr. Kamil, um, uh, how do you see the idea of collecting a large number of artifacts uh, uh, in one place, which is the Grand Egyptian Museum? And the very important uh, pieces uh, uh, Egypt uh, owes, of course. Of course, I Egypt owns a very that, important that, pieces like the pieces or uh, the um, uh, belongings of uh, uh, King Tut, King Tutankhamun, of course. Well, the, the King Tut's collection, it's the icing of the cake. Yes. I, I can't say that is, uh, it's not important. On the contrary, everybody comes to the museum to see hmm. the pieces of uh, or the collection of King Tut and Common, and if it wasn't important, they wouldn't have made a gallery for it on its own. Yes. Uh, although it belongs to the New Kingdom, and it could have been put in the uh, New Kingdom's wing. However, the Egyptian Museum has got more important, or has got just as important artifacts to be displayed over there, like, for example, the Tanisian collection of the 21st and 22nd dynasty with a great amount of jewelry and a great deal of um, artifacts because the tombs of these kings were found intact. So these are not famous, although they are very important. So they need a better display. They need um, to be shed more light at them through a unique display. I think also that there are lots of pieces in the storage rooms which haven't been displayed for a very long time due to the lack of space in the old museum. So the step of making uh, or building a new museum, a uh, modern museum with, uh, that follows all the steps of uh, the field of museology, modern museology field, I think it's a step that was, uh, we were late at that, but better be late than never. Uh, I believe that this display will impress the whole world as much as the pieces as well, because as you know, you cannot separate the piece from the display. You can have the most uh, beautiful artifact in the world, but with a bad display, it wouldn't show. I believe that the display itself, it will impress the whole world and it's going to be something for Egypt to be proud of for the next generation. Yes, uh, Dr. Kamil, uh, the team is uh, monitoring uh, the transformation of the six uh, big keys, uh, 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 grand uh, pieces that is going to be transferred from the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir to the Grand Egyptian Museum. The team, all the team are Egyptians. Do you have uh, an idea about the team who is... Yes, they are. And I'm really thrilled that now we have a new generation of Egyptian archaeologists yes. who are running digs and following up on every piece of antiquity in Egypt um, after a very long time of foreigners' control over the digs and publishing uh, new researches because of their digs. Now we have a generation, and I really here have to thank Dr. Khalid Al-Anani and Dr. Mustafa Waziri. Really, they have given a great chance to young, youthful, enthusiastic generation of archaeologists who are doing a magnificent work uh, in taking care of our antiquities, especially that they have proven that they are scientifically and technically qualified to take such responsibility. Okay, uh, Dr. Kamil, um, uh, uh, how do you see the importance of the uh, treasures of uh, King uh, Tutankhamun, uh, and why um, is uh, this uh, 
why is this young king uh, always uh, um, the, uh, attracting the attention of the Egyptians and the whole, the whole world, of course, uh, and is capturing the hearts of uh, uh, the people fond of civilization, uh, especially when the pieces of, uh, of King uh, Tut uh, ha wa was touring the world and it was uh, uh, displayed or shown in exhibitions in uh, uh, England and Paris and other nations. Simply because it's the only, it's because the tomb of King Tutankhamun, it's the, it was the only tomb that was found intact. And the only tomb that none of the archaeologists who discovered it had taken a single piece out. Uh, despite that Egypt was a country in a tough situation at that time, Egypt was an occupied country by the British and who discovered uh, what British so there was not a shield that thing, and yet the uh, Egyptian government at that time took a strong stand and kept it all. The tomb itself, or King Tutankhamun himself, historically, is not that important. He did not rule for long. But his tomb was found intact with more than 5,000 pieces over there, um, all in a very good condition. The tomb was not disturbed by any of the tomb robbers. So that had stimulated the minds of the whole world, saying if this was the tomb of an unimportant king historically, what were the tombs of the great pharaohs like, like Ramses II, Seti I, Tutmosis III, Aminhotep II, and all these great pharaohs, what were their tombs like? It must have been something beyond imagination. So it's all about the, stimulating the imagination of the whole world and making them appreciate more and more the ancient Egyptian civilization, um, which I believe for a very long time it's going to stay leading all the ancient civilizations in the whole world. Yes. Um, uh uh, Dr. Kamil, uh, now uh, with the transforma tra transforming uh, the six pieces uh, and other pieces that were transformed to the Grand, to uh, the uh, Museum of Civilization, for example, uh, the uh, Golden Parade uh, of the 22 kings and queens that were transferred from uh, the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir to the uh, Egyptian uh, Museum of Civilization, and other pieces that are uh, transferred to the Grand Egyptian Museum. A kind of uh, um, restorations uh, uh, were taking place uh, uh, from the, the Egyptian teams uh, who were monitoring uh, uh, the transformation of uh, these pieces. How can we uh, deal with these teams and get benefit from the younger uh, generation of uh, a restoring team? Well, now, as I said, we have a young generation of um, efficient uh, qualified archaeologists in different uh, branches of archaeology, including restoration, and we have now modern restoration labs. And I think those people, they deserve first to be uh, put under the spot for some time. At least the media would um, show the people yes. the great work that they are doing. These are the people in the shade, as we call them. They do magnificent work. You can never imagine how those people are working um, without even uh, thinking about fame or yes. about that. No, nobody really knows or yes. has shed light on their work. Yes, I sir. think they, des they deserve this. Uh, after all the hard work that they had done, especially yes. that some of them are extremely talented. Yes, uh, we really appreciate uh, the work. I thank you very much, Dr. Ihab Kamil, uh, the tourism expert. Thank you very much for joining us over uh, the phone. Well, with this, my dear viewers, we come to the end of this episode of our program, uh, Breakfast Show. I'm Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.